All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about different types of solutions. How many solutions does a problem have or does it have any solutions at all? There are problems that don't have any solutions and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? The first thing we're gonna talk about is one solution. This is probably what you've done up until this point in your math career. Every problem you've ever done has had some sort of a solution, okay? So this would be an equation, very, very simple. I just throw an example up here, x plus four equals 10. Well, we know, we, you probably know what that is off the top of your head, but if we work this out, we would subtract four from both sides and we would get the x equals six. We say that six is a, is a solution because when we plug that back in, it works. We get six plus four equals 10. And indeed, that is a true statement, okay? So we say that this problem has one and only one solution. Six is the only number in the whole entire world that would work when I plugged it in. There is no other number that I could say, add four and you get 10. Six is the only number. So this type of a problem has one and only one solution. Some of the biggest issues that I see are that people get fractional answers and it makes them nervous. There's nothing wrong with a fractional answer. I could say that six X is equal to four. If this was my equation, I'm gonna solve it like any other equation. I'm gonna divide both sides by six, and I'm gonna get x is equal to four over six, which reduces to two thirds. This has a solution. The solution happens to be a fraction, but there's nothing wrong with that. It still has one and only one solution. Two thirds is the only number in the world that I could plug into this equation and I could make it work. Six times two thirds is indeed four. So a fraction is fine. A fraction is still one solution. That is the one solution. Another major concern that students have is they don't think zero can be a solution and zero is indeed a solution. Zero is a number like any other number. It can be the answer to a problem. Don't let that scare you. If I had four X, equals zero, a lot of students are solving big long problems and they get down to this and they freak out. Continue to solve the problem like you always would. To separate four times x, you would divide out the four and you would get x equals, well, zero divided by four is zero. That is okay. Zero can be a solution. This problem has one solution and the one solution it has is the number zero. There's nothing wrong with that. The next type of problem we're gonna talk about is one that doesn't have any solution at all. This basically means that I could try every number in the world and it would never ever work. Um, so really there's no point in wasting your time trying all those different numbers. You could try positives, you could try negatives, you could try decimals, you could try fractions. None of those numbers would ever work in this equation. So let's talk about what it looks like when you solve it. I have three X plus six equals three times X plus four. Your first step in any equation is to simplify the left and then simplify the right of the equal sign. I can't do anything on the left, so I'm gonna leave it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna distribute on the right. So three times X is giving me three X and three times four is gonna give me 12. Okay, from here, I'm gonna keep solving. So I'm gonna say, well, let's move this three X over to the other side because my goal is to have all my X's on the same side, okay? Um, they cancel here. That was the whole point of moving them to the other side. So I'm left with six equals, well, three X minus three X. That cancels out as well. That leaves me with zero. So technically I've canceled out in both spots. And all I'm left with on the right is the number 12. So I've gotten all the way down to six equals 12 and all of my variables disappeared. The way you know that this is no solution is because you are left with an untrue statement, okay? Six does not equal 12. Six will never equal 12. This statement is not true and it will never be true. So your variables have now canceled each other out, leaving you with two constants that are not the same, that are do not equal each other, okay? That's where this means no number I could ever plug in would ever make six equals equal 12, okay? So we would simply say 
that this problem has no solution. There is no number that I could plug in at the very top for the variable x and cause the left side to equal the right side because 6 will never equal 12. There is a trick to this. Some of you may have already called on. Here's the trick. If you, in the middle of your problem, get to the point where you realize you have the exact same variable on the left as you do on the right, then you should automatically know that your variables will ultimately cancel each other out. This only works if they are identical. If one is positive and one is negative, they're not identical and this, this trick doesn't work. These are identical. They are both positive 3x. The second part of the trick is knowing that my constants are not the same. Meaning, when my variables do cancel out, and they will, I'm going to be left with two numbers that do not equal each other. So the fact that my variables are the same and my constants are so different means that I'm going to come out with an, with an equation, with an expression that is not true and will never be true. And I can there say that this problem will have no solution. All right, last but not least, we're going to talk about the type of equation where any number would work. I could, I could pick any number in the whole world. It's going to work positive, negative, decimal, fraction. Any number is going to make the equation true. It's going to make the equation work. So let's look at an example of this, and I bet you're going to see the trick pretty quick. Let's say that I have x plus 2x plus 3 is equal to 3x plus 3. You, you may already see where we're going with this one. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my left and I'm going to say, can I simplify the left? And I can because I have like terms. I'm going to combine those two like terms, x plus 2x, and I'm going to get 3x plus 3 equals 3x plus 3. Here's where you definitely should catch on to our trick. If you notice, I have the exact same problem on both sides of the equal sign. I have 3x plus 3. I have 3x plus 3, okay? Which means basically everything in this problem would cancel out, okay? But let's keep going. Let's see what happens. Just like the last example, I'm going to try to move this 3x over there. But remember, I have to do the opposite in order to get it there. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I'm going to see that it cancels here, leaving me 3 equals... Well, 3 minus 3 cancels again, leaving me with this 3 on the right side. Now I'm left with a statement that is true and will always be true. 3 will always equal 3. This is how you know you have a problem where any number you plug in can be the solution. So we say that this problem has an infinite number of solutions. Any number would work, so how many solutions can it have? Infinity. Okay? This would have an infinite number of solutions. I could plug in a 3, I could plug in a negative 8, I could plug in a 1 half, and I'm always going to get the left side equaling the right side, which is how you know an equation works or how you know a solution works. So this is called infinite solution. We see at the very top here, that we are ultimately left with the exact same variables on both sides, and we are also left with the exact same constants on both sides. This is how you know you're gonna have infinite solutions. Now again, if one of these is positive and one of these is negative, it doesn't work. That doesn't count because that's not identical. Both sides of the equation needs to have the identical parts. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you learn something about math or at least made the problems a little bit easier for you. Stay tuned. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll be coming out with more math lessons all year long.